back everyone. Now you might be thinking, Austin, what are you doing? You said we were gonna be welding today, not soldering. Well, we still have to do some CNC cutting. We gotta cut the mounts and everything for the truck, as well as some of the steps for the step. Uh, so we're gonna be using the CNC table to cut some of that stuff. I'll be providing the DXF files and everything for that. What I am soldering right now because I went and yanked on things and didn't have the proper connector on the back, so now I don't have any torch fire. So this is a lesson learned. Don't be yanking on things, especially if you don't rig things right to make them plugged in the correct way in the first place. Just amateur hour, Austin. Anyway, let's get into today's build. We're gonna be finishing up these side steps today. We're gonna get them mounted. We're gonna get them ready to get painted or line X or whatever we decide to do. But these things are gonna get welded out. We got some good gaps, some bad gaps, the ugly. We've got a couple more things to weld onto it, but today's episode's all about welding. And if you wanna see this full episode, go ahead and run on over to the weld app. We've got the full thing already done. If you're just checking it out now and you're only at the part three, you can see part one and two over on the Weld app with all the resources, the blueprints, the DXF files, the bill of materials, everything for this build. So let's quit talking about it, let's be about it, let's weld some stuff. CNC cutting is a blessing. And I, like I said, I will provide these DXF files for anyone that needs to get some parts cut that fit this here top. You can do this by hand using cardboard templates or finding someone local to do the CNC work for you. It's not too expensive if you're doing it small parts. The biggest issue is going to be finding someone who has the time to do something like this. But you can very easily just do your own cardboard templates if you only have uh, to do it by hand. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and get these things cut. We're cutting this 316 plate, we're cutting the brackets for the truck uh, and the step. Uh, 3 16th inch plate about 45 inches per minute at 60 amps and then we got some 14 gauge for the top of the steps and we'll be cutting that closer to like 65 inches a minute and really scooting at this 65 amps but all we got to do is sit back and watch this plasma do its thing and then we'll get to prepping the material <laughs> Well, all the parts are cut, everything's CNC cut. So now we can just really get to prepping things and getting everything really together. Prep is key. Any, we're TIG welding this whole thing out. So that means shiny metal is preferred, okay? Can you get away with this little bit of, little bit of mill scale on there? Yes, but it welds terrible. You're gonna get undercut and all kinds of stuff. So this, uh, this tubing right here, that inch and a half doesn't seem to have a whole bunch, but this, this one, or this two inch tubing definitely does. This plate and this sheet metal definitely does. So we, anywhere that we're gonna TIG weld or put a weld, we gotta make sure that it's shiny material. So I go first by hitting it with a wire wheel, getting all the dross off and kind of just cleaning everything up first. And then if I know that there's a weld that's gonna be touching uh, this spot or anywhere on there, that's where I'm gonna really try to clean things up even shinier or brighter as much as we can. If we can't get it with a flap wheel, we'll get it with a wire wheel. At bare minimum, it's gotta be clean for this TIG weld to weld really nice. If it's not, it just welds poor. You might get it done, but it still looks terrible. Now we've got all of our pieces prepped. We got all of our bracketry ready to go. Now we got to mount it. Now we want to mount these just like we did on the other one. We're going to go ahead and make a weld right here. Mount this to the inside of the truck. Find out exactly where the location of this bit is so that we have something, something that looks quite like this on the inside. Uh, once we know where the layout of this is, we'll get all four of these welded up right here bolt them all up and then get this hung lay out where all that where all this part lands on here as well as where this lands on the side we'll trace it all out we'll bring it back over here and we'll get everything tacked together now i know we just kind of breezed through that little welding section guys and don't worry we've got a ton of welding to do left on this step but we don't want to do all the welding at once so one thing i've got to do first is figure out where these go and what i learned from the first step is i need to mount all these in position first get them nice and tight where they need to be and then i can mount this step lay it out where these all land so that i can come back and do all the welding all together so don't worry we're still going to go over all the machine settings and techniques all that kind of good stuff don't forget, you gotta go to Amazon or wherever you can to get these bolts that you need with these little clips that fit so that you can mount this step. So that being said, let's get underneath this freaking truck. Let's try and get everything level as best we can. Just using these jack stand heads to kind of get everything level and get the roll right. We wanna make sure that this level sits level so we can see how far we gotta roll it up. It's quite a ways. 
just pick up these jacks. We're not quite touching there, we're touching there. This guy's just not doing anything right, and that guy's just clear up, just straight up not touching. I could roll this and get this to sit better, but it still stays off of that. Now, my concern is I'm gonna have to move this bracket to the other side of this plate. And this is the only one because of this corner, this cross section here, it's in the way. And if I take this out, everything sits right. So that means I gotta modify this. So now we'll pull the step back off. We'll flip the bracket around so that it clears the spot that I need it to clear. We'll put it back on the truck, put the other tabs back on, lay out where the brackets need to land so that we can get it ready to weld. Oh, man, I definitely don't miss making a living on my back, that's for sure. <laughs> man, my neck is tired. Hey, Marky Mark Mark. Marky Mark Funky Bunch. I'm tired of working on this thing, but hey, we're at the funnest part, or at least my favorite part, and that's all the welding. This is this is something I'm comfortable with. TIG welding carbon steel, I got that on lock. I did also f figure out that I put these damn mounts about an inch off center, so now they're an inch different from the other one, but that's okay. That's okay. Hopefully no one's gonna be driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour pulling tape measures to my truck because I'm leaving it alone. Now we can't just grab our TIG torch and just start welding willy-nilly. There's something that we got to consider and that's distortion. We've got a part here that's got all the welds focused on one side of this tube. If we get to hammering down and putting a lot of heat on the one side, it's gonna banana, it's gonna bow, it's not gonna fit properly. So the first step that we got to do before we can even strike an art is get this thing clamped down into position, get it fixed in, into a spot to where it's not gonna bow. You can also even tack some strong backs in, like a piece of flat bar to the backside of it to try to prevent any type of bowing. That might would also help you at all, obviously remove that later down the road. But you gotta prevent distortion. We've got all the heat located on this one side of the tubing, so we gotta be very careful. As far as machine settings go, we're gonna be using the Everlast Lightning 275. We're gonna be running DC negative TIG welding. I'm using a standard 17 torch, nothing fancy, no flex head or nothing like that. Got a stubby back cap, 2% thoriated, 1 8 tungsten, uh, tin cup from Edge Welding Cups. Uh, it's going to fit in there nice and tight where we're going to need it. We've got some different size gaps. We don't, they actually don't have to change any settings. We're going to be having the settings set to about 160, 170. Now that's really hot for eighth inch thick stuff. However, when it comes to the fits that are really nice and they're touching, the copes are good and there's no gaps or anything like that, we can hammer down and we're gonna use some 332 70S6 wire and really feed into it as we go. Now, maintaining that torch angle on this tubing is super important. It's fast, it's gonna be a quick transition. So if you can only weld an inch before you lose your torch angle, stop what you're doing, back off your foot pedal, reposition, get right, and then keep going. Now we'll be using 332 for the good gaps. If there are some bigger gaps, we're gonna go up in wire size to so that 1 8 wire and pretty much fill that gap with that bigger rod and just kind of do a little bit more of a side action or even just hammering down the heat and letting it wash to fill that gap with that 1 8 wire filling that void for us. If it gets too hairy, we're gonna be heating up the edges, cooling off with the foot pedal in the middle of the weld and then heating back into the corner so that we kind of bridge that gap a little bit. But we don't have too many bad, too terrible gaps. You shouldn't have to do that too much. Uh, we'll weld all the tubing up solid. When it's clamped down, then we'll get the steps all welded in solid. When everything's welded solid, we'll get that sucker bolted right back up to the truck. Now you might be noticing that there's some sort of pulsing going on. We got a bright light, then it gets dimmer as we get around this weld joint. Well, that's because I'm doing manual pulse. That's what's commonly referred to is when I take my foot and I hammer down on that foot pedal to get the max amperage or whatever amperage I'm looking for as far as recognizing this puddle and then backing off of it so I can move forward, reposition, whatever it may be. I really love this technique when doing this type of weld and aluminum and stuff like that so that I can really hammer into it. I got 170 amps full beans where I can really get this weld to get through there. Uh, and then whenever I get to these gaps, I can still hammer down, but I can cool it off all the way down to almost nothing so that I can get moving forward and not be worried about burning holes. If the big gaps are in the way, we wanna make sure we're favoring the tubing and not the edge side of the cope, because then that makes sure that that tubing cope doesn't run away from us as we go about doing it. Maintaining angles and all that good jazz is, is part of the trick. Uh, and really it is just taking your time, 
We don't want to do any distortion, so we're going to be bouncing around on this header piece. I might weld half of a piece of tube, then go down the way and weld a half of a tube over there and bounce back and forth, back and forth till this thing is all wrapped up and finished up so that we can prevent as much distortion as possible and we get these gaps figured out. Woo, tubes are welded up, they're nice and solid. Now we can weld these little steps in, make sure one's a little shorter than the other. As far as the steps, the back step's a little longer than the front step. So that'll go there. We'll get all these clamped in. Make sure that they're on the right side of this whole thing. That way your step's not upside down. That would be really annoying and another mistake we don't want to have to do. We'll weld this thing up real solid. The last thing we'll do is we'll cut the ends to the same direction as those two bins and get the ends capped. And then once everything's welded solid, we'll bolt it back up to the truck. And now we've got some side steps, bro. Now we're going to weld these plates onto the steps so that we have a nice plate to step on. It's basically a tube weld next to a piece of sheet metal, so we want to make sure we favor that tube steel a little bit more compared to the edge of that sheet metal. Using that manual pulse to also control that puddle, that 1 8 TIG wire is really nice to have that extra puddle to pull over to the sheet metal to make sure that everything fuses in and makes a nice weld. You'll see that I actually have to change my angle here as I favor that sheet metal too much. I have to turn the torch back upright and continue the weld. Once it's all said and done, we can polish up all these welds, get them wire wheeled, load them up in the back of the truck. I take it to the Linex place. I really like this Linex stuff. And let's get these sprayed down, load them back into the truck, get underneath it, and let's mount them up and check it out. Hey, thanks for watching everyone. And I'm actually really pleased with how these got fit up on the truck. I got all the bolts in them. So that's a, that's a big W for me. The Line X looks good. It matches the truck. I'm really proud of these steps. Now don't be putting a tape measure on, on both of these. They're not the same. And it was a big learning process. So I hope you guys learned something. If you want to see the full build video, be sure to run over to the Weld app. The whole video is on over there with the blueprint, with the materials list, with the DXF files that went with this build. There's a lot of mistakes and stuff that we learned along the way that hopefully you learn from as well. Again, thanks for watching guys. We're gonna be doing more builds. See you on the next one.